Hey all, I'm Aaron, and in today's video, we're talking about one of the most important aspects of designing and building your mobile robots, which is the drive system. The drive system is what allows robots to maneuver forward and backward and turn side to side. So let's dive in today's topic, or should I say drive in to today's topic. When building robots, we always encourage you to use the engineering design process. And the first step of the engineering design process is asking questions. There are several important driving questions that you can ask yourself, such as, how fast does my robot need to move? How much weight does my robot need to move? How maneuverable does the robot need to be? And then what type of terrain or surface will the robot be driving on? Once we've got some initial answers to our driving questions, then we can start imagining solutions to our robot design problem or challenge. So let's look at some different drive system examples. This first robot has a very common two-wheel drive system called a direct drive. In a direct drive, two motors power the two drive wheels individually. Those two motors help determine the robot's speed and direction by how fast the motors turn and then the direction that the motors turn, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. The Omni wheels at the back of the robot spin freely and the rollers on the Omni wheels allow the robot to pivot side to side so that it can make turns. Without these Omni wheels at the back of the robot, the robot will have a more difficult time making turns. In order for a robot to move, it must have traction. So as we look at these different robot examples, let's do a little experiment to measure traction using a spring scale. Now traction is affected by the weight of the robot and also the surface that the robot is driving on. So to compare one robot to the next, we need to keep the weight of the robots consistent and we need to use the same driving surface. This direct drive robot weighs about six and a half pounds. Now our heaviest robot weighs 15.2 pounds. So I'm gonna add about eight and a half pounds of gravel to bring this robot up to 15.2 pounds. After we attach the spring scale and drive forward, we can see that this robot has a pulling force of about six pounds. This next robot is also a direct drive robot that uses two motors, except that the wheels have been replaced with tank treads. Now tank treads often give you better traction, especially on uneven surfaces because they can grip and pull the robot along the surface. They also help distribute the weight of the robot and give it more pulling force. But there are some disadvantages to using tank treads. Turning can be more difficult because the tank treads tend to slip especially as the robot tries to make turns on smooth, hard surfaces. Let's try our pulling force experiment on the tank tread robot. Now the tank tread robot weighs about 10.2 pounds. And so I'm going to add five of these one pound bags of gravel to bring its total weight up to 15.2 pounds. When we attach the spring scale and drive forward, we can see that the tank tread robot has a pulling force of about seven pounds. Besides two wheel drive robots, you can also build four-wheel drive or even six-wheel drive robots. Now here is a four-wheel drive robot that's driven by two Tetrix Tornado motors. The four wheels are linked together by a chain and sprocket system, so as the motors turn, all four wheels turn at the same time. Four-wheel drive robots tend to give you more traction, which equals more pulling force. The downside of a four-wheel drive robot is that you tend to lose maneuverability which makes it harder to make turns. This robot overcomes that downside by using Omni wheels at the back that allow the robot to pivot from side to side as it makes its turns. We've added weight to the robot to bring its total weight up to 15.2 pounds. So let's see if the extra traction from our four wheel drive system increases its pulling force. When we attach the spring scale and drive forward, we can see that the robot has a pulling force of about seven pounds. Using the engineering design process, can you think of ways to improve this robot to make it a six wheel drive system? The type of wheels you use on your robot can also affect its pulling power. This four wheel drive robot uses all terrain tires that are each driven by its own Tornado motor. 
All-terrain tires have these large angled cleats that increase the traction on uneven surfaces and soft surfaces such as sand, snow, and mud. This robot also uses bevel gears to orient the motors vertically, which gives the robot more ground clearance. Finally, this robot has a suspension system that keeps all four wheels on the ground, improving its traction as it goes over bumps and obstacles. But on hard, flat surfaces, all-terrain tires might not be the best way to go. Consider how race cars and dragsters use smooth racing flats to maximize their traction with the racetrack. Let's see if the combination of the all-terrain tires and the robot suspension increases its pulling force. Now this robot already weighs 15.2 pounds, so we don't need to add any other weight. So when we attach the spring scale and drive forward, we can see that this robot has about 11 pounds of pulling force. That's more than what we've seen so far. But notice while we've gained pulling force because of the increased traction, we've lost maneuverability. This robot has a harder time making turns. Now you might notice that the Tetrix all-terrain tires are slightly larger than the standard Tetrix four-inch wheels. Larger wheels can equate to more speed. Recall that the circumference of a circle is equal to the diameter times pi. So the circumference of a four-inch Tetrix wheel is equal to four times 3.14, which is 12.56 inches. So every rotation of the motor with a standard four inch Tetrix wheel equates to about 12.56 inches of travel. Now the all-terrain tires have a five inch diameter. So five inches times 3.14 is 15.7 inches. So for every motor rotation, we get 15.7 inches of travel. That's a 25% increase in distance traveled over the standard four inch Tetrix wheel. So assuming that the motors rotate at the same speed, that's a 25% increase in speed. The next drive system that we'll look at is called a holonomic drive. Holonomic drives are designed to maximize maneuverability. They allow for movement in all directions without having to rotate the robot. Holonomic drives are often useful in robotic competitions and challenges where the robot must line up on an object, pick it up, and then place it in a specific location. The first holonomic robot that we'll look at uses four Omni wheels placed in an X configuration. Each wheel is driven by its own motor, which allows each wheel to turn independently from the others. Through programming, we can control which wheels turn, the rate at which they turn, and the direction that they turn to allow the robot to maneuver in any direction. We'll save the specifics on the physics behind the holonomic drive for another video. Here is another holonomic drive that uses only three Omni wheels. This specific configuration is called a Kiwi drive. One advantage of the Kiwi drive over the X configuration is that with only three wheels, all of the wheels are in constant contact with the ground. So as the robot travels over uneven surfaces, the robot has more traction because all three wheels are always touching the ground. When the X-Drive robot travels over uneven surfaces, it's likely that at least one of the wheels will lose contact with the ground. And when one wheel loses contact with the ground, the robot tends to stray from the direction that you want the robot to go. One disadvantage of the Kiwi Drive robot though, is that it can be more complicated to program because of the angles that the wheels are set at. Let's try our pulling force experiment with the two holonomic drive robots. The X-Drive robot weighs 11 pounds, and so we'll add four bags of gravel to bring its weight up to 15.2 pounds. When we run the experiment, we see that it has a maximum pulling force of 13 pounds. The Kiwi Drive, on the other hand, weighs a little bit less, only 9.2 pounds. So we'll add six bags of gravel to bring its weight up to 15.2 pounds. When we attach the spring scale and run the experiment, we see that it has a pulling force of only six pounds. The last robot example that we'll look at is another type of holonomic drive. This robot uses special wheels called mechanum wheels to achieve motion and maneuverability in any direction. Each wheel is driven independently by its own motor. Mechanum wheels are often used in industrial equipment 
to move heavy objects like pallets around a warehouse. You can check out our RoboBench video on mechanum wheels to get a better understanding of how mechanum wheels use force vectors to achieve their maneuverability. To complete our experiment, we'll measure the pulling force of the mechanum wheel robot. But first, we need to bring its weight up from 11.7 pounds to 15.2 pounds. Then with the spring scale attached, we can measure and see that it has a maximum pulling force of about eight pounds. There are several other drive systems that we didn't get into today that you can build an experiment with. These include using Ackerman steering, like what's used on most vehicles, or articulation, like what's used on many large scale tractors. Not to mention, when planning and creating your drive system, you can use gears to create gear trains. You can use chain and sprockets to drive multiple wheels. And you can experiment with different Tetrix Tornado gearboxes. Tetrix Tornado motors come with a standard 60 to 1 gearbox, but you can get 40 to 1 gearboxes or 20 to 1 gearboxes to increase motor speed while reducing motor torque. So here are the final results of our experiment. It looks like the X-Drive holonomic robot achieved the highest pulling force. But remember, with pulling force, there are several engineering trade-offs to consider, including speed and maneuverability. So think about these trade-offs when you're choosing your drive system so that you can meet the goals of your competition or challenge. Then use the engineering design process to modify and improve your robot until your drive system functions like you want it to. And as always, remember to have fun, build some robots, and we'll see you next time.